thank you so much for having me. And uh, I'll give you a um, twofold in, um, presentation on where we are with decentralized insurance and where we want to go. We have already a long journey behind us. We started in 2016 uh, with the first ever blockchain based uh, decentralized insurance product, Flight Delay. Um, how you can ensure a flight against being delayed. And this was the first ever smart contract which has had acted with real-world risks. Uh, we presented it on DEF CON 2 and it was uh, gathered some attention at that time and encouraged us to go further and develop these ideas further. And the result was then uh, in 2018 the launch of our DIP token and uh, the start of the framework development. Because from the beginning, we were very convinced that decentralized insurance is not about a single product, but about an ecosystem of many people, many projects in which are working on insurance products and which use a common platform in the very similar sense like all the DeFi products run on the same platform, Ethereum, and work together to, to build this decentralized economy. And insurance is a huge economy and there is a lot of stuff to do. And uh, so a framework where you can build flexible products with different audience, with different customers, target groups, is the right approach. And uh, we believe that uh, the next years proved our approach to be correct. And uh, in 2019, we published the first version of the GF framework together with an updated version of flight delay. And uh, it turned out that the traditional countries and the traditional economies of insurance are very hard to tackle because these companies uh, are working in a highly regulated environment, which is very hard to modify, to, to in innovate. And so it turned out that the emerging countries, the developing countries, are much uh, closer to adopting blockchain solutions than the uh, established uh, economies and the indus industrialized countries. So we started in Sri Lanka with the first uh, crop insurance. It's also a parametric insurance, uh, weather-based, and uh, it turned out to be very successful in the small country. Uh, however, uh, we, we, we have all also learned that the last mile to the customer is absolutely crucial. So farmer need to be uh, able to directly interact with blockchain and in Sri Lanka, we have no pay, uh, mobile payment system, and it proved to be a, a hurdle. So we were looking for a different country, and um, <coughs> so we found um, Kenya. Kenya and East Africa has a mobile payment solution, and PESA, and farmers can directly interact with uh, payments with the uh, smart contract solutions. But of course, you need some bridge between the two worlds, and. Uh, we are working with a partner who bridges the uh, M-Pesa world, a mobile payment solution, with the blockchain and makes it available for 25,000 far farmers uh, last year alone. And uh, so we are now scaling the solution. And in 2022, we started uh, a large coalition together with Lemonade uh, Insurance, uh, with Hanover Re, with Chainlink, um, and some other parties to launch uh, this crop insurance on a global scale. And then we are not talking about 25K farmers, but we are talking about 100K, 200K. In total, we have over 500 million smallholder farmers all over the world. And uh, this is, of course, a huge market and very promising. And maybe blockchain is the only way to approach these uh, farmers and these target groups. And at the same time, to be able to, stay, to, uh, to scale, we of course need a secure platform. So we launched uh, several audits for our smart contract, which are now finished. We are currently implementing the findings, uh, which will be ready in a few weeks. And then we have a completely audited uh, system, which is audited by some of the best auditing companies worldwide. And of course, uh, together with uh, the new framework, which is now uh, in the version 2.0, we have also implemented risk pools and staking. And we plan to go live with uh, public risk pools in the near future, uh, ideally not, uh, well within this year, but uh, in any case, it's not far away. So where to go? What are the challenges for decentralized insurance? And what are the big uh, <coughs> issues we are currently working on? 
And we have uh, three big areas uh, which uh, need to be worked upon. So the first is scaling. Uh, we have already a, a, a solution which works up to maybe 50k farmers uh, or 50k customers, but of course uh, we want to go much uh, larger and uh, to much uh, higher numbers, so we need to think about scaling. Then we have governance. We want an open system which is actually run by the participants. It's not uh, me or somebody from my team who should run uh, the system and make all the decisions, but we want all participants in the system to be uh, engaged in the governance and we need to find a way. And uh, the DIP token is, of course, uh, the key uh, to the governance and I will later on uh, show you exactly how. The last point is the economic model. Uh, also, currently, we are collateralizing our products by 100%. So for each sum insured, we need one dollar or one dollar in value on blockchain in a risk pool. And this is not very capital efficient. No insurance worldwide works like this. They all have much lower collateralization. So we are also working on new models to, uh, to uh, decrease the amount of money which needs to be locked in the economic model. How does it work? Let's go to scaling first. So we have four dimensions where we need to scale. We need to scale the infrastructure and we need to scale the transaction speed. And the other two dimensions are the economic scaling and the ecosystem. So we want to have more products, more, pro, uh, more people working in the, in the space and so on. But let's first look at the tech. <coughs> in, in the tra transactional space, we uh, have now a tr uh, this solution which works to up to 50k farmers. But uh, rem uh, if you think about 100k, 200k, then you have in peak times, you will have about uh, four or five uh, transactions per second. And uh, imagine a blockchain like Avalanche, where we are currently working with, uh, then uh, we are actually CryptoKitties in Avalanche. And uh, so we need to find solutions which enable much higher throughput. And we have found a way to uh, do gasless transactions, and this will reduce gas cost by ni nearly 90%, and also reduce the gas amount for in a single transaction, and enable up to 10 times higher throughput. In the infrastructure, we are already uh, we have the GIF, the Generic Insurance Framework. This is our main solution. We are working on a one-click install, so every project can launch an, a new instance for their testing and also for productive instances in a phased and safe way. So this will also enable the onboarding of new project in a very short time. In the ecosystem, uh, in the same way, we uh, are working on audited and uh, configurable product templates. So interested teams do not need to code a smart contract, but they just need to take the template, change some parameters, maybe add a data source or an oracle, and then they will be able to deploy it and uh, have an audited system without ever coding a single line. So this is also uh, our goal, that the whole ecosystem becomes much more accessible for new teams. And economical, of course, we have currently risk pools, as we uh, mentioned, 100% collateralization, but uh, this is inefficient and we need to find new ways. One way is to stack risk pools. So, for example, you have 10 products. Each product is collateralized by 50%, and the remaining 50% is uh, shared in a common risk pool, which is used by all the teams. And so uh, we can also reduce this um, uh, capital requirements for a single product. And this is exactly what the traditional reinsurance companies also do. Uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, quite ambitious, also from the regulatory side, so uh, this is probably take, will take some time un until we solve all these problems, but uh, there is a way to go, and uh, we have also developed new legal models in certain countries where we can reduce the regulatory requirements by a lot. Governance. So, <coughs> how does the governance model look like? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we can deploy the GIF framework on multiple chains. We have already uh, deployments on Gnosis, on Avalanche, of course, Ethereum itself, on the Binance chain. Actually, any EVM-enabled blockchain can uh, run the GIF. 
And uh, so we expect that we have many different instances, not only a single one for each chain, but maybe 10 different instances on Gnosis, five instances on Avalanche and w uh, whatever. So a huge ecosystem. And uh, now we want to ensure that the quality of all these instances is somehow guaranteed. And therefore, we offer each of these uh, teams, which are de deploying a GIF instance, to be registered and certified by um, so-called token curated registry. So each GIF instance can register. They will be audited and receive a badge that they are certified. And this uh, token curated registry needs, of course, to be run by uh, an independent and neutral uh, authority. And this is our decentralized insurance foundation in Switzerland, which has the sole purpose to promote the whole Etheris ecosystem, and they will maintain a neutral oversight over this governance process. They will not influence the decisions, but just take care that the decision making is fair and correct. And they will have also an, ad, an advisory board, which is organized as a DAO. And so all these GIF instances and the people project which runs this instance will be able to become members of this uh, DAO and also delegate in the advisory board, which uh, will then in turn uh, govern the uh, involved entities. And of course, uh, in insurance, you will even on blockchain, there will be cases and there will be products where you need arbitration. And uh, for example, an oracle can fail and then you have an undefined state of your smart contract. Of course, you can try to avoid it, but maybe there is always a case where you need some uh, final arbitration. And this is also something that what we want to deploy, uh, an arbitration board, which can be, it's optional, which can be used by the interested teams. Last one, the economic model. Uh, Maybe you have seen it on our homepage. This is a framework. We have insureds on the left side, and we have in the middle tokenized risk pools and investors on the other side. And we have people in the bottom who run the whole system, people who provide products, oracles, license, distributors uh, who sell the product. And of course, we need instance operators which run the GIF instances. So how does it work? First of all, we need, of course, some capital, which is provided by investors, by staking in tokenized risk pools. Then the insured will pay for his product, a premium, and part of the premium will end up in the tokenized risk pools. The other part is used to pay the cost for all the infrastructure, like product, oracles, license, and so on. And a certain fee is also paid for the instance operating for providing the infrastructure. And then, uh, of course, uh, in terms of claims, the money will flow back to the insureds, and the rest is a reward for the staking for the investors who will make some profit on it. The second level is uh, now uh, one level higher, so we now are not looking on a single instance, but on the set of all the instances in the ecosystem, where we have many. And these uh, instances, <coughs> as I said, they can register in the token curated registry, and all of them will pay a certain small fee in a global staking pool and will also stake DIP tokens in the global staking pool. Uh, so they have somehow skin in the game, and only by staking in the global staking pool they are uh, eligible for membership in this DAO and in the advisory board and all these uh, um, entities. So this is the uh, second level, and what do we do with the collected fees? There is one answer. We will use these fees for the further development of the platform and the framework. So we have a complete system which is sustainable, and where also the future development of the platform is ensured by the this, this fees which all these instances are paying to the global uh, staking pool, and um, which is used for the development of, of the platform. Okay, coming to the end, of course, uh, we are at Chainlink here, at the SmartCon, and we have a bonus here. We are also working on um, so-called verifiable off-chain computation. Chainlink today is uh, working primarily on very small data, single data source, and uh, it's very simple data. But in insurance, you have complex processing and complex off-chain computations, you have gigabytes of data which you need to process in a verified manner. And this is something where we are providing a solution 
Together with Chainlink, we will develop a framework for verifiable and trust-minimized off-chain computation for large data. We are really talking about big data here. And this uh, verifiable infrastructure works on, on uh, several, several layers. We have, first of all, we need to verify the code of this off-chain computation. We need to verify the input data and, of course, the whole uh, computing environment. And together, this forms an on-chain verifiable computation. So in, in the end, everybody will be able to check all these computations on-chain, even computations on big data. Uh, and uh, so this will open uh, applications which are currently not doable because the uh, current chaining infrastructure is just not made for it. Okay, that's for today. Thank you very much for listening to me. And uh, I hope you have a nice day and uh, learn a lot in this great conference. Thank you so much. Thank you.